I make an awful lot of boxes and uh, on these very thin tops I can't use my normal back hinge which I really like so I am forced to use something called a, you know, a stop hinge like that. You see this quite often on, on boxes. Well, this requires a groove to be put both in the back of the top and the back of the box in order for you to put this in. And it's not an easy task. You could do it by hand. You could use a chisel. Um, I've done all that and that seems to work okay but it's not really professional and then you could make some jigs this is one jig I made up and uh, it lets me use a router a hand router to cut out the places for the um, stop hinge but you know the problem with that is I need a different size jig for every single size box I make. Now, even though most of my boxes are standard sizes, uh, 6 by 10 on the top, uh, that's not always the case. You know, sometimes I make them bigger, sometimes I make them smaller. It all depends on what wood I have on hand and how I feel that particular day. So, rather than make 16,384 different things, I decided to make a more universal one that I can put on my router table and hopefully solve this problem. So this next story is going to be about the creation and how I made that particular jig. If you like it, thank you very much. And I'll leave some links on the bottom of this to show the program and uh, maybe the files. In this video we are going to learn how to do a piano hinge in the box. And there's several different ways to do it, but it, it, it's, it's pretty simple to do with a router. But you have to know your numbers. And uh, here's what I came up with. It's a simple spreadsheet that I use to calculate all the numbers I need in order to get my stops on my router to get my box done. So the first number I have here is the width of the box. And this is the full width of the box. Now I separate out the box and the top. You have to do this two times. So the width of the box, if you're doing the top, is the width of the top. Now if it's the same, okay. But in me, in my case, most of my tops are slightly larger than my boxes. So this is the width of the box. This is the width of the hinge. Now piano hinges come in different sizes. This here is 8 inches, and that's my standard size for um, a piano hinge that I use. The router bit dimension that you're going to be using, I use a quarter inch diameter bit. So that's what I put in here. So these are my three variables. Now from that, it automatically will calculate out the margins left and right that's left over on a hinge. This is the position on the router offset from the center of the router bit that I have to put my stop block on the right side. And of course the complementary pair on the left is negative. So the total distance from block to block is going to be this number over here. And that sounds pretty complicated, but it really isn't. So let's say I'm doing a 10 inch block. So if I do a 10 inch block here, you'll see that all my other numbers change. With a 10 inch block using an 8 inch uh, hinge, my total margin that's going to be left over is 10 minus 8 or 2 inches. So assuming that you're going to center it, which you, this equation does, that means 1 inch on one side, 1 inch on the other side. So in order to get this correct 8 inch with a hinge, your right block has to be mounted 8.875 inches to the right. Your left block minus 8.875 inches to the left. The total block distance then will be this number over here. Now let's take a look at how that looks. Okay, so this is roughly a 10 inch top. I got a quarter inch diameter bit and yeah, 
My router cable is pretty hacky. Uh, I probably need to replace it. It's seen better days, but it's really done a lot. And the back also is uh, an old backstop that I made, and I use this quite a bit when I'm doing my boxes. Okay, so here's my stop, and here's my stop. So in the old days, what I had to do is I had to actually measure from the center to this position over here, and then from the center to this position over here, using those two numbers that I calculated. And it works, but that measurement was a little bit icky. So what I decided to do was uh, something pretty simple, is uh, I created a ruler. And this is the ruler that I created. It's uh, both metric and imperial. And you notice it has the zero number right over here. So I cut this out and I made a DXF file and then I put the numbers in using light burn and I burned this on my laser. Of course you can also just cut this out with um, um, a very simple um, a CNC as well with a point bit. So either way will work out of the same DXF file. So then the next thing, I, and, and then all I have to do then is use these edges and put the stop block wherever the number is that my program calculates. So mounting it was also a problem. But I happen to have a very old Ryobi um, router guide. And I was going to throw this away a long time ago, but you know, I decided to keep it around, and I think that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to mount the Ryobi, I'm going to mount that ruler that I did on the Ryobi and make sure that I have my measurements set up correctly here. Uh, should be fun. Let's see what happens. I do almost all of my designs in uh, TurboCAD Professional, and this one was no exception. I just been using it for, you know, like, 20 years, so I'm very familiar with all the tools and I can do them fairly quickly. So I drew off on the bottom one inch segments and I split them off into half inch, quarter inch, and eighth inch uh, segments. That way I can very precisely put my stop blocks on. On the top, I also did metric and in centimeters and decimeters. So hopefully, you know, between the two, I will be able to very easily align my stop end blocks. So after I got done with this, I exported it out to DXF and imported it back into Lightburn. I love Lightburn for a lot of things and uh, I use it to do most of my character work as well. So here I decided to put all the labels on with Lightburn and uh, I only needed to label the primary numbers. I didn't need to label the anything else. So 1 through 13 inches and on the top 0 through 30 uh, centimeters. So this worked out to be a really nice block. Um, after I got this done uh, you can see that my I have a 100 watt laser so I was using 20 watts power to do the uh, characters. Well um, I was doing Formica on top of MDF and though this worked fine and I did get my characters cut, the problem I had was that the characters were melting the plastic and lifting it off the MDF a little bit. No problem. I mean, it looks okay and everything. I mean, I got other issues with my laser besides that, but I mean, that looked okay. But one of the things that I was worried about is when I slide a box across, will that bump cause a problem and scratch, possibly scratch my uh, box. So if I repeat this and do it again, I would suggest just doing as low power as you can and it should be that, that will scratch the Formica and make it a visible uh, number. Okay, then the other thing is that Lightburn can also output to um, a DXF file so I could do that and put that into my CNC router if I so desire as well. So I have, Lightburn is just really a nice tool for me. I love Lightburn. Okay so now we go ahead and we will actually do the construction of the jig and then show you a demo run.
Well, I'm all done assembling this and I put this on my, my Roby rig already. So some of the things that I changed is I added my depth. I cut out a little hole here for the quarter inch router bit. And that's right here at the zero line. I also inscribed two lines on the system. One line was at two inches negative. One line was at two inches positive. So that should give me my reference points when I re-put this guy back on. So let's do that. And uh, I mount that on here. And I put the reference line on. Okay, now the next thing I did is I squared this up a little bit. And this is the flush cut and I made a reference line in both directions that way. So that took care of another problem. Okay, so with the reference line, all I have to do now is worry about the depth. So this is a standard hinge and the way I do it is I do it so that the depth of the cut is just a little shallow here. Okay, so I think that should be about right for the depth of the cut. Now you can measure this and you can see how deep that's going to be by just looking here. And you could put a reference line there if you want to for, for a future. But I think this is going to be good for this point. So again, double check my reference point and I'm going to put my three, five sixteenths bolts tight if I can I don't know why. There we go. Okay. And then do it through the other side as well. And okay, make sure these guys didn't move. And they didn't. Okay. So, got my new jig in place. I got my two reference points lined up. I've got the depth of the hinge already outlined in here. So, the next thing I have to do is to put the stops in. Now, according to my calculations that you saw on the charts, they have to be at 8.875. So 8.875 would be exactly 8 and 7 eighths of an inch. So that would be right there. So that will be one reference point. And then the other reference point is negative 8.875, so that would be right around there. Okay, both of them are in place. So the next thing is actually cut. So for a practice run, this is a 10 inch piece of MDF. So what I'm going to do is put it in there and run it through. Now that cut a pretty big uh, bit, and I got two problems. So let's let's take a look at them and see what I what I did wrong. All right. Well, first of all, it's really tight. 
So evidently I have to move these out just a little bit. It looks good, but it's a little tight. The second problem is, is I screwed up the depth. So with the depth, the depth should be, when you put this on here, this should be just flush with the cut. So obviously I didn't, didn't do that. So let's do that again. Okay. That will be a more shallow, and I'm going to just do a quick cut here. Yeah, that looks that looks a lot better, and the hinge looks good. So let's let's redo that. Now I know that I've got to move these and for some reason I'm just a little bit off, not much. So I'm just going to squeak it out here and I'm going to squeak it out here. Probably a 30 second additional. I'm going to try this one more time. Okay, not bad. So we got a nice fit. And I could probably just do it a little bit more off on either side. But it's a nice flush fit. And I think everything else here will work pretty good. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a do. We're okay. And we're ready to go. That's a hinge. That's what I did. Okay, mark, mark.